Hello everyone, this is Mirzai from Kalpali Pomona and in this lesson we're going to talk about the confidence interval and hypothesis testing for two populations averages. Since we have already introduced the concept of confidence interval and hypothesis testing for the differences between the average of the two population, when variances are given, I want to go over an example of your textbook, which is example 10.4 uh, from Montgomery textbook and see how we can use we can use confidence interval and hypothesis testing to answer this question. Uh, the problem statement says that tensile strength tests were performed on two different grades of aluminum spars used in manufacturing the wing of a commercial transport aircraft. From past experience with the spar manufacturing process and the testing procedure, the standard deviation of tensile strength are assumed to be known. So this part gives you the information that you know the standard deviation of the two population. The data obtained are as follows. N1 is 10, X bar 1 is 87.6, Sigma 1 is equal to 1, N2 is equal to 12, X bar 2 is equal to 74.5, and Sigma 2 is equal to 1.5. If mu1 and mu2 denote, denote the true mean tensile strength for the two grades of spars, we may find a 90% confidence interval on the mean strength mu1 minus mu2 as follows. So suppose that you want to calculate the 90% confidence interval for the mu1 minus mu2. So you have two types of aluminum spars that you're using to manufacture the wing and you want to see where the difference between the average of the strength of the two type of wing falls into. So if you calculate the confidence interval and see that your confidence interval includes zero, then there is no difference between the average strength of the two type of aluminum that you use to manufacture the wing. However, if they are different, then you might want to be interested in looking into which mu is higher and which one you want to choose for a future manufacturing process. So the information that is given that you have the standard deviation of the population sigma 1 and sigma 2, also you have the sample size from each uh, type of uh, aluminum that has been used and you also have the x bar 1 and x bar 2. So the formula for the mu1 minus mu2 was x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus z of alpha divided by 2 multiplied by square root of sigma 1 square over n1 and sigma 2 square over n2. So if that was the lower bound and upper bound was the same term except that this negative turns into a positive. Um, so you have all the information, you plug it into this equation and you calculate the mu1 minus mu2 90% confidence interval. Now the question is when you look at this interval if I ask you to test the hypothesis that mu1 is equal to mu2 what would be your answer? If mu1 is equal to mu2, then 0 must be inside this confidence interval, which at the moment is not, because both of the lower bound and upper bound falls into the positive side, and th therefore it doesn't include 0. Therefore, with 90% level of confidence, you can tell that, that the, 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 the average difference between the strength of the two types of aluminum is not the same. Which one has a higher strength? Is gonna, you see that the mu1 minus mu2 is falling between 12 to almost 14 unit. That means in average, the aluminum number 1 has 12 to 14 units of strength higher than the second one. So if you're in charge of manufacturing, you want to decide and you want to decide which one to choose. You probably go with the aluminum type 1 that has the highest level of strength. If somebody asks with 90% level of confidence is mu1 is equal to mu2, the answer would be no because the interval doesn't include 0. Now let's answer the same question with test of hypothesis. If I want to go through the formal process of test of hypothesis to answer this question, the first hypothesis, the null hypothesis, is if the mu1 is equal to mu2 or the difference between the two is actually zero against the hypothesis that the, the mu's are not the same. So I have to calculate the z statistic with the difference that this part is my hypothesized difference. So this part comes from sample or population, this part comes from your hypothesis. So let's calculate that. So we have the x bar 1 and x bar 2, we place it in here. And for mu 1 minus mu 2, you have to put your hypothesized difference, which in this case is equal to zero. And you have the sigma 1 and sigma 2, n1 and n2, you plug it in, you calculate the value of z, 
Now I have to test whether this falls into my acceptance region, which, which is between negative 1.645 and positive 1.645. If you don't remember how to calculate the z of um, 0 0.05, please refer to the video related to how to calculate the critical z or z of alpha. There you can figure out how to calculate this number. Then you have to check whether this number z falls into this region or not, and it doesn't fall into this region, so you end up rejecting the null hypothesis. We also got the same conclusion previously. Right, So when we tested using confidence interval, we saw that 0 doesn't fall between 12 and 14 that we calculated for our confidence interval. Also here, the value of z statistic doesn't fall into this region. So therefore, we end up rejecting the null hypothesis. So if you do it right, you always have to get the same conclusion whether you use the confidence interval or you use the hypothesis testing. With this, our lesson has concluded. Please refer to your Blackboard for your assignments. Thank you.